Hi there everybody, this is Devin Olson from Developer to Developer, and today we're going to expand upon our first tutorial of how to build a 3D model with Interior onto a new tutorial of how to texture this 3D model. So to begin, I typically like to turn off the software's default lighting that it puts on our model so that way we can expose all faces to no lighting and be able to observe them evenly. So to do that, we'll go ahead and turn Smooth plus Highlighting off by going to Flat. And you'll see none of the faces on our model are now lit by the software's default highlighting. So now let's go ahead and start choosing our textures. So if we hit M on our keyboard, that will bring up the material editor. And you'll see that the material editor is broken down by sphere slots. And each one of these slots can contain texture that you can manipulate to include also specular levels, bumps, uh, reflections, opacity levels to your heart's content. Um, but unfortunately, you'll see that we're only limited to a number of spheres in the material editor that it's broken down to. So how do we create an infinite amount of material slots that we can use? Well, to begin, we'll select our first slot here, and we'll change its name to Building Textures. And we'll change its standard mode to a multi-sub object. And we'll discard any old materials. And what this does is it makes a sub-dimension of material slots for us that we have an infinite amount that we can set. So now we have 10 here, um, and if we wanted to set this to a crazy number like 100, we can. We'll set this back down to something more like uh, 10. Now to use these material slots, we'll go ahead and select the material name off to the right of material 1, for instance. And again, we're back to that first view of when we selected the material slot 1 up here. And here we can set all the different maps that we need for this single material, such as Diffuse, Specular. It's pretty much the same as we were at our top level before we changed it to a multi-sub object. So let's start adding some materials to each one of our material slots now. So under the first one, we'll go into it again. And under the Diffuse, we'll set up a new bitmap material and it will allow us to choose the material that we want now. You know, over the years I've collected pretty much every texture that I see and every texture that I get so that I can use it uh, for instances such as this. So my texture library seems to be quite large. So what I like to do is I like to just fill up my multi-select object with just a bunch of materials that I find interesting or relate to this model or the, the, the plot or scene around it. Whether I'm going to use it or, or not, I just like to, to have my resources filled with a bunch of interesting textures that I can use at my will and not have to keep going out and finding things. So let's add, say, concrete underscore 20. Click it and choose open. And the first thing that I would like to do is change the name of this diffuse color. So we'll call it concrete uh, number 20. And we'll go up a level. We'll also change this to concrete number 20. Now the reason we did this is so that when we come back to our multi-select object, we have concrete number 20 as a unique name for our material. So again, we'll just go down to material slot 2 and start filling this up. So click diffuse, bitmap, and we'll go out and find some more interesting textures. So jumping forward just a bit, uh, you can see I've gotten filled up about 10 material slots with different materials such as concrete, uh, wood, carpets, uh, wallpapers, and floor tiles. So let's start assigning some of those materials to our actual model. We'll select our model, and, and typically the first thing I like to think about is what surfaces are the largest surfaces of our model, and in this instance it's the outer walls of our building. So I like to go ahead and associate a texture with that particular surface and use that for the very first texture that we assigned the model. So let's take texture concrete 26 for instance. I think this is a great texture possibly for the outside of our walls and probably the majority of the large surfaces of our models. So I'll go into texture 26 and I want to make sure that I have show standard material and viewport turned on. And we're going to do this for all of our textures, but I tend to do it as I go through them and assign them. So I'll take texture 26 and I'll just drag it onto the model. And you'll see this texture shows up 
we have some UV problems as far as the texture stretching on different surfaces. So let's just assign one large UVW map to this by going to our uh, modifier list and adding a UVW map. And it's usually set to default as plain, so we're going to want to put that into a box so we get a nice even surface over all the faces. And you can go ahead and click the added UVW map to make sure that it's selected and change your transform and we'll go ahead and just start scaling this down. So that we get a nice resolution. You can see it's a bit stretched there. Typically, you're going to want the UVW box to be a, a square ratio because a surface tends to have even ratio of detail in it. So if we go to our top view by hitting T and then hitting Z to zoom and then Alt X to turn it to transparent, we can go ahead and scale this down to an even box in our top view and possibly our front view. And our left view. And if we hit Alt X, what we're left with is a nice, even, detailed ratio texture over all the surfaces and the surface lengths. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and just collapse this preferred UVW into our edible poly by right clicking on the modifier and saying collapse to. You'll probably get a warning that this will remove the portion of the stack selected from the objects. Uh, you can probably just check do not show this warning again and click yes. Great, so let's go ahead and pull up our material editor again. And maybe we want to add some of this concrete 21, some of this red detail to some of our building. We'll go into it and we'll say show standard material again and we'll come back out. On our model, let's say we want some of these terraces to be of that red color. Go ahead and just select them by using the element select. And we'll take texture uh, 21 and we'll just drag it onto it. Okay, so we'll unselect these surfaces now. Just take a look. Looking pretty good. So let's add some more textures, I guess. We'll come into maybe Concrete 1 and turn it to be shown in Viewport. And we'll just start selecting some of the maybe trim that we have going on here. Maybe as well as the it to our roof. Okay. And we'll just drag concrete 21. Or 20, sorry. Um, so we just continue to start adding more and more materials to the outside of our walls. So maybe we want to add different concrete for the interior of our roof. We can hit M. And maybe we'll choose concrete three. Let's see what that looks like. It's not quite the same. It's a little different. We also have this nice poly band that goes around the outside of our building. We can also use this other concrete texture on as well. And maybe this is a, an area where the material dictates that we actually have to add some additional geometry to these bands. It might look better if it was actually beveled out, if it was an edge. So let's just hit the extrude button, set this to zero, click OK, and we'll scale this out in one direction, and scale it out in the other direction. So something like that. Okay. And then of course we're going to go ahead and uh, want to select the additional surfaces that we just extruded out. Okay, so with all the faces selected, we'll go ahead and add another UVW map modifier. Make sure this one is boxed as well. Turn our model transparent and we will scale down. 
to an even ratio again. Okay. Let's take a look at that resolution. Maybe if we want to give it a little bit more resolution, we could scale the entire ratio down. So the details get a little finer. Great. We'll just collapse this and take a look. So maybe we want to add um, some tiles to the top of our roof here. We'll select these faces, bring up the material editor again go into floor tiles, turn it on, and we'll drop floor tiles on. And this looks a little squashed to be a square tile, so we'll assign another UVW mat modifier. Set this to box, and we'll scale it down. You know, actually you could have left it at planar. I'm sorry, you didn't need it to be a box if you're just selecting one face. We'll collapse this as well. Okay, so pretty much does it for the outside of our building. Um, you know, obviously we could always add more and more detail. But let's go ahead and start getting into the interior part of our model now. So just like our last tutorial, we're going to go ahead and start hiding some of the faces that we're not going to need to see anymore through here, and we'll select all these terraces first. So with those selected, we'll just come down here and we'll say hide selected, and we'll do the same thing for our outer walls. All right, so with the exterior faces hidden and the interior exposed to us, we can go ahead and start texturing the interior. So let's go to our first level here, zoom in. And I typically like to start on the floors, but to each his own. So to begin, I'll go ahead and just start selecting all of the floor faces. Maybe I'll leave this, this poly out for, for potential texture of a landing at a later point. Let's do the same thing for the other floors. So let's open up our material editor and throw down the carpet texture and make sure the show in viewport is on. And we'll drop this texture on there. And it looks a bit large for our UVs. The resolution, it almost feels like a canvas floor. So let's drop a UVW modifier on it. And we'll scale this down. something like this. It's a nice good resolution. And we'll collapse the modifier. Great. With the floors done, let's go ahead and hide these. Come down and say hide selected. And I'm going to go ahead and leave the ceilings as a concrete. ceiling selected, we'll hide these as well. So now pretty much all we're left with is the walls and the staircases. So let's work on the walls first. What I've gone ahead and done is went to my uh, edge modifier tool and I selected a lot of the interior edges all the way up to just the front rooms here. I'm not going to select any of the wall edges here uh, for the staircases or this back hallway. 
And the reason I'm doing this is because I would like to split these walls into two textures, so I'm going to need to split the polys. So with all of these edges selected, we can right click and go to connect, and it will slice our selected edges in half. And it will auto select the slice for us, which is great because you can see when it did the auto calculation for finding the center of some of these selected edges, they were off from the rest of them that went all the way from the ceiling to the floor. So with these auto selected for us, let's just go ahead and go to our Z axis in the scale and we'll just scale down until everything is a unified level. Okay, great. So we can go to our polygon tool now and we'll just start selecting some of the upper half of these walls. So with all those selected, we'll hit M for our material list again. And let's maybe throw wallpaper two. Go into it and make sure show viewport is on. And let's give it a UVW. So we'll go ahead and scale the UVW down and make it more of a ratio equal to each other. And then we can kind of get in there and see what the resolution looks like. Maybe we want to bring that down a little bit. We'll collapse this. And then we'll come in here and we'll select the bottom half of our top floor now. So we'll bring up a material list again. And maybe this time we want to assign some wood. So show viewport. this box. That tends to help. And we'll play with the resolution. So maybe that resolution is a little bit better. Um, of course you can always just, you know, amplify it as large or small as you want. I kind of like maybe that right there. I tend to like to watch for the seams of where the textures are landing. So I mean, that seems not perfect, but in a grander scheme for these guys over here, and maybe this one right here, and over here, and right there as well, it, it, it works. Um, if you want to adjust it, you don't have to necessarily use scale. You can change your transform to a move for one side and kind of move it around. And again, we'll do it for this side. Great. So we'll collapse two. And so now we're just gonna go ahead and proceed to these same steps to the rest of the floors of the building. Um, so let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so as you can see, I've gone ahead and proceeded with the rest of the floors. However, the first floor might look a little different because we aren't using the wood texture as the bottom portion of our new split in our walls. And I'm actually becoming very fond of this look versus the wood texture. And I'm also liking the, the wallpaper that we've chosen for the bottom floor. So you might run into this a few times. I run into it still to this day. Whereas uh, I think this is a good idea at one part of texturing my model and then I get down to another area where I think okay this is even better and it becomes a pain to go back and select all the faces of the material that I want to replace and then replace it with a material that I would like and one quick way of actually reducing the amount of time in doing that is just go ahead and with the polygon element selected we'll go ahead and select a polygon of the the material we want and you'll see it highlights ID of 8 and so if we say select all faces that have an ID of 8 it selects all the wood faces for us we can go ahead and just replace that by hitting M for our material editor and we'll just drag this new concrete texture onto it. Okay, and we can do the same for our two different wallpapers. So if we select one of the faces that has the wallpaper, we say, hey, it has an ID of 9. We'll select all the faces that have that same ID and again hit M to 
pull up the material editor and we'll just drag our wallpaper four on it. Okay, um, and then we'll come and do the same thing for this one. Select all faces that have an ID material of seven, and we will replace that with wallpaper four. Great. So because we went through level by level, this is the problem that you also run into when you want to re replace one material with another one, is that the UVs are off. The top level has one resolution of UV, the middle has a different, and the bottom has yet another different one. So using that same trick, let's just select all faces that have an ID of 10, and we'll add a new UVW map. change our transform to a scale and we'll just scale this down to a ratio or an even ratio from top front and left okay. and then we'll go ahead and just scale them all to bring in a tighter resolution something like that Maybe even a little bit more all right go ahead and collapse this yet again and that's our new consistent look across all the floors our first floor and our back wall still contain a different concrete texture than the one we just applied so let's go ahead and fix that as well so we'll come up here and we'll say select by polygon select one of the polygons we want to replace with and we find out its material ID is one. So select all faces that have a material ID of one that are visible right now and we'll go ahead and just replace that with our new concrete. Just that simple. For the interior, however, we picked up the same UV resolution as we did from the outside for our main texture that we set up on all the walls. So we'll add yet another UVW, set it to box, and scale it accordingly. And bring its resolution into something that would represent the finer detail of the interior versus the rougher, less resolution detail of the exterior. Collapse two. And there we go. Okay, so now let's go ahead and start highlighting the walls that we've already completed so we can focus mainly on the stairs. Okay, so now that all we have left is the uh, staircase stair steps themselves. So let's go ahead and just select some of these faces. We'll just select the front faces first. Do this for all sides, for all levels. Okay. Open up the material editor and we're going to assign the wood texture. Now we're going to add a modifier, UVW, and set it to box. And we're going to rotate it uh, 90 degrees. And then we'll start scaling it again so that it has a square ratio or as best two. And then we'll play with the resolution by scaling them all. So you might want to play with the, the scale until you see, again, the seams line up perfectly for each step. And that's going to be a little difficult to do, so it's probably best to try to get a larger scale in there. Oh, there it is. Perfect something like that. And we'll go ahead and collapse too. And we'll hit Control-I to invert our selection. 
open up material editor and we'll just drop the wood texture again and this time we'll observe it from the top view add a UVW map box and we'll go ahead and scale Seems just about perfect right there. And again, we can finally adjust it with the the move tool itself, so we get a nice, good seam. Great, we'll go ahead and collapse too. So let's go ahead and select them all again, and we'll say unhide all faces. And we're going to do another creative pass on the outside. You know, texturing is an ongoing process. You know, like I said before, you'll you'll work on one area at one point of the model. You'll get down to another area where you start getting some more uh, high fidelity detail, and you come back out, and this is not quite what you were looking for anymore. And you know, it's it's not that hard if you just you know select a face, find a material that you want. Oh, material number four. You know, I'm going to replace uh, just these these bands around the outside with that inner concrete we did for the roof. But I'm going to replace it with our red texture because, you know, it kind of seems like the terraces and that belong together. And then we can do another thing like extend the white of the roof terrace out onto this upper band here if we wanted. Um, just to give yet another seam. So, I mean, it, it's, it is a creative process and it's ongoing until you know you're you're really comfortable with it and you'll know when something doesn't feel right uh, you just got to keep exploring and possibly uh, finding more textures and applying to it you know, or maybe the inside of our outer terraces we don't we don't necessarily want those to be red but we want it to match the uh, the concrete that we're using for the exterior as well so we can just select all those faces You know, and maybe we don't necessarily like the, the front of the ribbon on the outsides to be red. Um, the tops and bottoms are okay. You can just select those. Maybe we want those to be a white trim as well. Just drop that. You know, we'll go to each door frame. like so, and we'll apply the white trim here as well. Okay. Yeah, you can go ahead and just give it a new UW if you want. We just want to get a tighter resolution on it. like the trim around this to not be white, but rather the red. And underneath it should be white.
said we forgot a door frame here. So we'll just add the white. And I think in the landing that I purposely kept separated for each floor, I'm going to use that tile texture again. And of course we're going to have to apply a new UV. And um, maybe we want to add some some terraces like so, a ground, and a few trees, and then we can preview a quick render. And it's looking pretty good. So before we wrap up here, I also want to go back to our material editor by hitting M. And I want to remind you that each one of these material slots in our multi-sub object has the ability to have additional details added to it, such as the bump map, flexions, a gloss, uh, self-illumination, opacity for alpha channels, specular levels, you know, for giving something a shiny or seemingly wet look. And, you know, these can all be manipulated and played with by the lighting um, and the rendering. So with that, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope this helps a few novice modelers out there. Thank you very much.